So the team that ended Manchester City's 100% Premier League record in August will today try and put the first stain of defeat on their league record at home. And Arsenal today are facing their fifth different Manchester City goalkeeper in as many meetings. After James Weaver, Isaacson and Schmeichel, it's Joe Hart. Micah Richards makes a timely return from a knee injury in the week that he was named in Fabio Capello's first England squad. Deep Mahaman, rested for the midweek draw at Derby, is restored in preference to Kelvin Atuhu. And Ilano also left out at Pride Park, replaces Darius Vassell as the support for Dan Sturridge, who scored in both games he's played this season. Vassell and Sunji Haya on the bench, along with Kasper Schmeichel, who saved a penalty at Arsenal in August. Well, when I look at this, 11. I think maybe apart from Michael Johnson, who's been out for quite some time now, who would play alongside Haman. I think you might look at this now. There's been a problem area here at the top. Who can lead the line for them? They've tried all sorts up there. Danny Sturridge given the opportunity. Couldn't have done a better job of it in the game and a half he's had two goals in those games. So they may have found a front man, but I think this is probably the strongest 11 that he could pick right now. Delighted to have Mika Richards back, facing Adebayor, who's in great form. Then Richards and Dunn, who have been great this season, have to be great again today, you feel, to give City a chance. A man, very important job, obviously, that he always does, breaking up the play. And I think if he plays, and he's due a performance, in my opinion, for Manchester City, taken off at half-time against Sheffield United, left out in midweek against Abbey, brought back in, they've said to him, go on you, give us your at beginning of season form again. That's what they need today. Well, Jens Lehmann, who lost his place for the win over Manchester City in August, gets it back against the same opponents today, Manuel Almunia having dislocated his finger. The rest of the team's unchanged from the Newcastle game, with three of the back four in the current French squad, as are two of the midfielders, Abu Diaby and Matteo Flamini, who scored that wonder goal in midweek. Emmanuel Adebayor will be looking to score for Arsenal for his eighth game in a row. And there's no Gilberto on the bench, he has a back injury, so Armand Traore, who's yet to play in the Premier League, comes in as cover. Well, not a lot new you can say about how Arsenal was set up, but it will be that. Very familiar, back four. And Philippe Sendros, this is only his eighth start, but the seven previous games, pretty good record the lad's got. Four of those games he's had been involved in clean sheets, so that's a good sign. Up ahead of that, they've just got footballers. They put them anywhere they like, they'll go and play, they'll rotate about the pitch. And at the head of that, in the absence of one rate, they have found one of their own, isn't they, in Adebayor. Well, Manchester City were top of the table with three wins out of three, including against Manchester United here, when a winning goal from Cesc Fabregas brought that perfect start to a shuddering halt earlier in the season. Manchester City did have a 100% home record until the last three league games here, from which Blackburn, Liverpool and West Ham have all taken a point. It's City against Arsenal, and it's live next. Push the red button on your remote control, follow the instructions to that menu page. Another weekend of Premier League football starts here, it's Manchester City against Arsenal, incentive for the Gunners, win. Take over at the top again. Commentators, Andy Gray and Rob Hawthorne. And here, taking place in the presence of Fabio Capello, despite the presence on the pitch of only one member of his squad. Micah Richards was named in that initial 30-man party and has recovered from an injury just in time. There are actually more members of the Swiss, Swiss squad that he'll face on the pitch with Philip Sendros of Arsenal on the one side and Jelson Fernandez of Manchester City among those that he's facing today. Great deal of mutual respect between the two managers. Sven Joran Eriksson ideally would like to build a club as Arsene Wenger has done in North London. Wenger with seven trophies to his credit since he took over at the club. Yeah, but a little gap since his last one, and I think that's what Arsene Wenger's anxious to eradicate this year, is to win a trophy, get back winning those again, giving himself a wonderful opportunity. Andre Mariner is the man in the middle today. It's actually the first Arsenal match that he has refereed. Two captains, William Gallas and Richard Dunn. 
overseeing the toss. One slight concern for Sven Joran Eriksson today, looking ahead to that big derby match with Manchester United next week, for which he's already lost Vedran Chorluka through suspension. And he's got four players out there today who are a yellow card away from also missing the match, apart from Richards and Fernandez, Dietmar Haman is just one booking away from his 10th of the season, and Ilano too is a caution away from missing that derby fixture. Well, what's a bet one of them does, eh? <laughs> well, by the law of averages, you'd think at least one of them. Well, Manchester City could go fourth, at least temporarily, with a win. Arsenal, who are only behind Manchester United on goal difference by five, will take over leadership of the table temporarily, even with a point here. Big day for Dan Sturridge. He and Micah Richards are both actually Arsenal supporters from their youth. Joe Hart in the Manchester City goal. Arsenal were amongst the clubs that were looking at him when he was a youngster with Shrewsbury, just look from the way that he was shielding his eyes then, that the sun may be a bit of a problem to him. Will be, first half anyway, but that's why William Gallas did decide that he'd stay as he was, give City the kick-off and protect Jens Lehmann. Well, have a bit of a problem with that. Obviously a low winter sun as well. Here's Clichy, and now Matteo Flamini, who scored one of the week's most talked-about goals. That was Abu Diaby trying to get the first strike in, but away from Hart's goal. Well, that was a foul, but Andre Marner decided to allow play to go on. I think if you ask Cesc Fabregas, they would have liked the free kick from there. It wasn't really a great chance for Diaby. But you can see the referee pointing and saying it would have been a free kick, I would have given it had the ball not dropped where it did to Diaby. Abu Diaby is uh, celebrating the award of a, a new Arsenal contract. Jens Lehmann just celebrating the return to the uh, first team. He hasn't played in the Premier League since those early season blunders against Fulham and Blackburn. It'll be interesting to see how City go about this today. Three draws in the last three home games. Obviously not what they wanted, but weren't easy fixtures. Blackburn, Liverpool and West Ham, not easy to play against any of them. Neither are Arsenal, so how they say it up? They're always, well, how would I say, a little cautious? Yeah, I would say that. Manchester City and I think they're happy to keep the game nice and tight and, and play if they can get a 1-0 and against Arsenal would be a fantastic result for them I don't think I don't think they'd be too expressive first half they won't throw too many forward well, after the way their home form was last season City delighted to still get to this stage of the season without having been beaten here but Arsenal were the first ever visiting winners in this stadium and as we've seen, have an excellent record in the Premier League against Manchester City. Can't afford to give the ball away as Ball just has to Fabregas. Schleb looking to make inroads. Ball, who gave possession away, was initially there holding him up. Sanya unable to keep it in. Chelsea Fernandez, that was Fabregas, now Kleb. Clearing header by Richard Dunn. Dunn who's turned in some of his uh, best performances in recent times against Arsenal. Here's Senderos, now Clichy. Struck against Chorluka, but Clichy quickly onto it again. Here's Flamini. Senderos. This is Diaby. Rolled into the path of Galas by Cesc Fabregas. Now Bakary Sanya. Just skipped away from Hleb. A man under pressure from Flamini. Finds a route out in the form of Micah Richards. That'd be an interesting end of the side of the pitch. City's left. Arsenal's right. I was wondering whether Sanya might be restricted a little because he's against Petrov, but it looks like early on he's going to bomb forward like he's doing now. He's going to test Martin Petrov, his ability to get back in there. He might just try and get 2v1 against Michael Ball at times, and I think they'll probably get it. 
Bristol, the man who was uh, caught up in that balloon fiasco at Bramall Lane. <laughs> Thankfully, the pitch here has stayed a balloon-free zone at the moment. Here's Adebayor. Now Senderos. This is Diaby, Flamini. Away by Michael Richards. Fabregas, and Flamini, this is Alexander Hleb, Flamini, Sanya, Fabregas, Eduardo looking to get on the end of it, but Hart was quickly out. And we could have played Sanya and Fabregas, not like him not to see a pass. He was wide on the right, he was free. Here's Haman. Now Elano. Ball. Petrov. Into the path of Elano. And he's clipped a brilliant ball through, and Ireland had got free. And the flag had stayed down then for Stephen Ireland. That looked like a real chance. Oh, this is a beautiful little run from out to him. Timed it perfectly. I don't think he's off. You look at the right back, you look at Sanya, he's playing him on. And anything on that, any touch, he almost took his foot away from it. Almost admitting that he wasn't going to get it, but any touch at all would have taken it past Lehman. And he'd been rolling it into an empty net. It really was as though uh, Ireland at the end, at a crucial moment, just lacked the courage of his convictions. I think it probably just skipped away. I can't believe anyone getting making such a good run. A lovely ball fed through and would have given it up. It was the vision of Ilano that set up Stephen Ireland for that opening. I can see again with a lovely little run and it just skips away there and the watch the leg comes up well I think he just sees it can't get there didn't want to stretch it and over stretch something but very close but that's what they need you, you, you just think that they need Alano to be in that kind of form where he gets the ball he's involved in it and he influences the game no one has doubted his ability to cope in the premiership no. one or two have questioned the physical side whether he can cope with that well i, th I just think it's a as a punishing season physically the premiership league and if you're not used to it and i don't care how good you are you know it can it can take it out of you and i can ask you questions the longer the season goes on he's had a dip in form alano there's no doubt about it but maybe you know being hooked against sheffield united he wouldn't have been pleased about that not playing against derby gives him a little rest and I think Sven's obviously hoping that today he's had that little break, he comes back fresh and at it again. But it depends how much of the ball they get, because they are playing against a team who love to dominate possession of it. That's the area I'm talking about. Sanya and Hleb can get 2v1 against ball. Might be something to work out. Half a ball on this occasion is on the free kick. I just put the leg up there, just catch it. Nothing much in it. Still looking into the sun, Joe Hart with the kick. Away by Gallas. Here's her man. Milano has done brilliantly there. Seemed to be knocked out of his stride by Flamini, but the referee was close enough to it. No, he showed Flamini just enough. First part was exquisite from Milano. Oh, he's in the Abbey. And it's played to him by Adebayor, and he tries the back heel to return the compliment to Adebayor, and it didn't come off. Given away by Petrov this time, Fabregas. Oh, go wide. Klepp. He's found Sanya, first touch takes him, pass ball, second finds out of my all! And he's forced it in, the man who just cannot stop scoring at the moment.
A late reaction from the Arsenal fans. They're a long way away of that's why. They only reacted when Adi Bayor started running behind the goal. But it's the area of the pitch I talked about. It's Sanya's ability to get forward and not be tracked properly. And when they lose the ball in this area, you watch Sanya, he's gone. Petrov, well, he's too late now. No reaction from the wide player. And then the 1v1, what a run that is, and a beautiful ball back. He gets a bit of luck, but I'll tell you something, there's a front man. It's amazing how much luck you get when you're on a good run. If he'd been looking for a goal, that wouldn't have gone in. But because he's on such a brilliant run, the little stab towards goal, half blocked by Richards, but only half blocked. The eighth Arsenal game in a row, in which Adebayor has played and scored, and that's his tenth goal in that period. It's 20 now for the season in all competitions. Very pleased Arsenal must be that Togo weren't at the uh, yeah, Nations Cup. You better Cup. believe it. You better believe it. Here is Adebayor again. Fabregas. Here's Kleb. Flamini. Clichy. Diaby. Here's Clichy. Now Senderos. Oh, a bit like Manchester United in midweek. I thought they were excellent. Arsenal have started the same sort of vein, hugely confident, popping the ball around, dominating possession, and I would guess dominating territorially as well. The goal from Emmanuel Adebayor, the 50th that Arsenal have managed in the Premier League this season. Solano finding Fernandez. Well, I mentioned the territorial advantage that it is. And possession would be pretty dominant as well, I would guess. Well, we've got a three-horse race, we think, in the league. We've got a two-horse race in the top goal scorer, I would suggest. He watches Ronaldo get a couple in midweek and thinks, OK, I'll close the gap a little. And he's done just that. With time enough left in the game, to close it again if he can. Here's Diaby. Clichy. Now Michael Ball. Sturridge. Here's Ilano. This is not a new thing for City at home, though, recently. I think they went down against Blackburn, but came back. Uh, went down against... I think they might have gone down against West Ham, came back and got a 1-1. So they have lost the lead here a couple of times recently and managed to come back, get something out of the game. Now, this is Arsenal, it's a slightly different prospect. Here's Clichy. Now Diaby. This is Ireland. Arlen Vassell back, free kick given. Well, this is a chance because if there's an area where they're slightly suspect, in my opinion, it's dealing with crosses, it's dealing with cross balls. They're not the best, they're not the biggest. And Richards and Dunn are due a goal. There's neither has uh, managed one so far this season. Petrov who lifts it in, and there's a good header away from Diaby. That seemed to be sailing in Chorluka's direction. That was. Crucial defending from Abu Diaby. Well, he is one of the bigger ones, isn't he? In the side. And that's a good leap. Look at them, three blue shots coming in. I talk about the mark, and you, that was an example of it. You know, that ball's over Diaby. There's one of three nodding that in.
Klepp. Now Sanya. Klepp again. It's Flamini. Eduardo looking to make room. It's Fabregas. Now Sanya. And by all's waiting again. Challenges with Hart. Oh, that might be a generous free kick. Whether he just gets up early here, I'm not sure. Sometimes if you get up early, the problem is your arm goes over the shoulders of the goalkeeper. Flag's gone up on the far side, it could have been that. Yeah, flag's up top of the pitch there. Clichy. Now Diaby. Senderos. Fabregas. Gives a chance to have another look at that. Opening goaler today. It's not a classic in any way. Scored better. But what will disappoint Ericsson is the way they lose possession there. Petrov slotty ball back. And from then he doesn't get back in. Sanya leaves him. And they've got a problem from this moment. Good position. Just stays where he is, Adi Bayor, and waits to be found. Gets a little bit of luck. A good omen for Arsenal is that uh, Arsenal haven't lost a Premier League game when... Adebayo has scored. Mm. Only once have uh, City come from behind to win a game this season. That was against Newcastle. Richards misses the header. Eduardo up against his uh, international and former club colleague, Vedran Choluca. Now Hamad. Got away from Dan Sturridge. Amanda retrieves the situation and finds Michael Ball. Petrov has set up ahead of Ball. Fabregas, though, blocking the pass. Oh. <laughs> I thought they'd edge possession. And not just edged. <laughs> Elano. How different things might have looked had Stephen Ireland been able to uh, make the most of that through ball from Milano before Adebayor's goal. As it is, City find themselves in the uh, typical position of trying to overturn a deficit against Arsenal. has just dipped for uh, Sven Joran Eriksson's side in recent months after the great start they made to the campaign. Here's Dunn. Now Haman. Micah Richards. Well, you can't just take a side that was playing as poorly as Manchester City Rob and turn it round overnight. I mean, it was a wonderful start and has been a great season here at City Manchester Stadium for them. But he will wait till the end of the season. He'll take a look at the 38 games as one with his staff and then decide where they go. You know, it's all about progression. I know football fans notoriously have uh, short memories, but I'm sure the City fans remember the uh, heartache of that eight-match run last season without a goal here. Injury there for uh, Gallas, seemed very concerned about the impact of Sturridge's challenge. It's a tad theatrical from Gallas. He's holding, he just ends up holding his side or something like that. Oh, his hand and his... He's side there. So it certainly wasn't anywhere that the young lad made contact with. Stretched out a bit. Here's Haman. 
away by Sanya. Fabregas. It's Galas. Now Kleb. Eduardo. Lamini seeking out Diaby. Nice cushion ball to Cesc Fabregas. Overdid it there, cleared by Haman. Now Alano. Ball. Here's Sturridge. Fernandez. Petrov. Eduardo. Now Flamini. Out of by all setting off ahead of him. Here's DRB. Clearing header by Richards. Now Flamini. Finds Flair. And Sanya sets off. Petrov looking for cover in behind. And Sanya has got him behind. When we're not used to defending and people working, you can get found out. And this young lad's going to work Petrov all day, I feel. He gets back in this time. That's not the problem. The ball tucks so far in. But he's not in a position to cover Petrov. Fortunately for City, it's a poor cross in the end. But I think with Martin Petrov, they've obviously decided what he gives them and going forward is, is too good not to have on the pitch. I would agree with that. But if you're sitting and you're struggling a little bit, maybe you just got to work a little harder defensively. Petrov, one of the signings that Sven Joran Eriksson brought in to immediately uh, revolutionise things. He's uh, made further moves in January. Felipe Casado, the Ecuadorian striker, due to link up next week. But the uh, Benjani situation, the strange one, as the uh, yeah, very. player is left in between. City, though, saying they weren't left with enough time to uh, complete the deal. But Eriksson talked to Jeff Fries earlier, confident that he would be a City player. Here's Eduardo, now added by all. And in comes Hleb, he and Fabregas in each other's way to start with. But Fabregas still wins a corner from the deflection off ball. Well, Eduardo decided to play the ball. I wonder, does this drop to him here? He's good enough just to half volley, just smash that cross goal, but he decides to keep the ball moving. He just get crowded out in the end. Just past the first quarter of the game, and we get the first corner of the game, which Eduardo takes. Now here's Galas. Clichy. This is Diaby. Now Senderos. Eduardo. It's just natural apprehension, but a subdued uh, yeah. atmosphere here big in East crowd. I'm just looking around, see, it's a pretty big crowd here today. Again, probably 40,000 plus. But the trouble is, when your team, the vast majority of support here, don't have very much of the ball, it's very difficult to get excited. Here's Flamini. 
Fabregas, now Kleb. Now Petrov. The crowd find their voices again as Petrov takes on all comers. Galas proving one obstacle too many right at the end of that run. And they just overran it more than anything. Here's Eduardo. Now Diaby. Clichy up to his left. Added by all, Eduardo! 2 0 Arsenal! Brilliant. Absolutely Brilliant. magnificent! Well, we are so lucky in this league. I watched on Wednesday a young guy from Portugal give a stunning performance of finishing, etc. And this guy's reputation is growing every time he plays. It's another flowing, beautiful Arsenal move. So, so pleasing on the eye. And this is what they've got in a locker now. Hangs it up back post. Offside, possibly. But take, a, take that away and watch the finish, everyone. Watch how he deals with this. Richard's on his back. See you, son. Overhead kick into the other corner. Absolutely exquisite. What a finish, son. Look at that. Eyes never leave the ball. Goals never move. A classic piece of uh, ingenuity from Eduardo. And I was just about to say, Rob, about a couple of minutes before that goal, City had actually switched things around as well. They're so concerned with the, the lack of the ball and the Arsenal's domination of the football in midfield. They actually moved the Atlanta to the right-hand side just below us here. And they've tucked Stephen Ireland in one into midfield just to try and congest it a little more and, and break up Arsenal's play. They weren't able to do that. Now, that might be a change they have to get rid of now, because they're chasing two. Choluca. Still demanding more from his players. Well, he's been here long enough to know, even though you're dominant and you're 2-0, doesn't take a lot to get back into a Premier League game. There's Clichy under pressure from Chorluca. And he, could he pay for the mistake? He has! Fernandez gives Manchester City hope. Told you. <laughs> it doesn't take long to get into this league. All it takes is a mistake. Now just deal with it. But such is the confidence of these Arsenal players. They think they can play in every part of the pitch. But sometimes you can't. And there's a classic example. Doesn't matter how good a player you are, if you're a defender, deal with the problem. And if you don't, you give a chance away. Full marks to Chaluka. He took his time, he picked him out, and that's a very good slot, because he didn't have an awful lot to aim at Fernandez. Now we're back to square one. Game's back on again. That's a goal. why he was asking for more. <laughs> was the goal for City when they needed it most. This man, Eduardo, had scored a magnificent effort that had seemingly put City in their place, but the casual play of Clichy has given City genuine hope. A layoff from Sturridge, though, and that latest move breaks down, and back to Arsenal with Hleb. Added by Orr's touch, Fabregas. That might be a free kick. I like what I've seen of Fernandez. I've watched him a few times. We've seen City quite a bit on Sky this year. He's played a few of the games, watched him away at Pompey and a few other games. He's only a young boy, 21, I think. And I think he's certainly got a future here in this league. Confident boy, good on the ball. Looks like he might have an eye for a goal. Scored very quickly, didn't he, after uh, coming on at Newcastle in their last win. 40 seconds after he'd been introduced. Fabregas with the ball in, and by all was up with a header over. And he was ahead of Richards, that was all there, just got in front of him. I actually think for him this might be a chance. Just Richards just doesn't get there. 
Just tries to put his arm across to affect him. Sendros, Fabregas. And here's Richard Dunn. And Sturridge is offside. Only just stepped out and cliche stepped out late. Left back, I think was probably the closest. See the other centre backs go. And the left back suddenly thinks, oh thanks guys. Here's Adebayor. Swept away from him by Micah Richards. Cleb. Here's Sanya. Adebayor! Lovely save. I hate, I think, that Joe Hart could... I think I'll, I'll save this. No, it's not too far away. It's full stretch, admittedly, but it's at a good height for the goalkeeper. Decent header from Adi Bayor. Might be upset if that got past him, young man. Well, more action to come later. Championship, Watford against Wolves, a repeat of the FA Cup match that Wolves won so handsomely at Vicarage Road. That's live on Sky Sports 1 and HD1 from 5.15. Three goals here in the first half an hour. Two minutes and eight seconds between that magnificent Eduardo effort and the goal from Gelson Fernandez that has given Manchester City renewed hope, although they've never scored more than one goal in a Premier League match against Arsenal. They don't have the best record in this uh, fixture in the history no. of the Premier League. <laughs> no. They did win it here last year. It's, a, it's an only one in 21, isn't it? That's right. Here's Fabregas. Now Kleb, looking to set off Emmanuel Adewayor. Dunn sticks to his task well. Fabregas up towards Eduardo who bumps straight into Pedran Choluca. Well, this is the kind of thing that Arsene Wenger saw in this young man, tempting him to bring it with this club. This kind of finishing, absolutely exquisite. And then two minutes later, well, another one of his young stars this time does something he shouldn't be taking a chance like that, an edgy and 18 yard line because all of a sudden 2-0 becomes 2-1 and City are right back in it. Here's Michael Ball. Fernandez. Back by Dunn. Here's Gleb. <laughs> he is offside. Well, he's fortunate to get away with that. Clichy. Now Diaby. Calas, Sissania, and a by all, here's Fabregas, and her away by Michael Richards. Well, you can't say we haven't been entertained for 35 minutes. As usual, Arsenal, easy on the eye, flowing, great movement. 
The city have stuck at it. Not had much of the ball as an attacking force, but they've stuck at the game and they've taken the one big chance that they've they were presented, really. Fabregas' corner, and they all leapt. Sanya's in there too. Didn't quite fall to Senderos. Oh, let it go, referee. Let it go. Let it go. Flamini. by Choluca. Senderos. Fernandez has won it from Flamini. Here's Sturridge. Petrov. Just shifted back for a minute to the system they started with Valana just off the front. Ireland on the right again. Is Kleb. Then stuck a leg out. And Choluca gets it clear. It's Flamini. Eduardo. And by all held off by Richards. Now Fernandez. Petrov beats Galas to it. Oh no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's Chaluka. One by Dialva. The man came in to put the pressure on Eduardo. Took him down. The former city teams may have crumbled, but. Mm. This one is held firm. Here's Sanya. Abu Diaby. Here's Fabregas. Kleb. endeavours of one Arsenal a corner. Well, that's what you get for not giving it up. He might have done. Lots of players would have. I don't think the ball was meant for him. He just got in the way of the pass and knocked it towards the goal line. Eduardo's corner. Adebayor's header. Here's Galas. Oh! Well, Adi Bayor might have headed this in, but not Fabregas. I mean, this is going for goal. He does like scoring goals, William Gars, and that's a shot. That's how close. In fact, it wasn't too high for him. I just wonder if he's got half an eye on the goalkeeper. Choluca. Kleb. Now Fernandez, this is Ilano. Ball. Hamat. Hello. 
Fernandez. Chaluka. Pitic, just overrun at his first touch. Chaluka, who was uh, playing against Arsenal in a Champions League qualifier at the start of last season. For Dinamo Zagreb when he played alongside Eduardo. <laughs> City fans annoyed at the time that uh, Klusch is taking over the throw-in while Senderos adjusts his footwear. Just add it on, simple. Chaluka. Yes, Hleb. Eduardo. Gallas. Now Flamini. Bradabell, who's uh, offside. Well, I guess that flag shouldn't have really gone up, because he never got to it, did he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get confused with these rules. I always thought they had to wait till the player involved got the ball. You can see he's nowhere near that. Neither that Ward wasn't offside, so maybe it should have gone on. You can tell me, can you? <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> Here's Richard Dunn. Now Hamad. Galas struck it against Fernandez. Well, this is a game that could easily have been out, out of Manchester City. They could be over the hill and gone, Arsenal. But they're not. And I think that's the one thing that would please Ericsson. Having lost two, could have been more. They got themselves back into the game. Have a reach for Michael Ball. Yeah, we'll have a couple of things to say and probably do at half time. Whether they'll stick with this way they are now with Elano on the right, Ireland tucked in. I would guess so, with, with only been a one goal deficit. Here's Fabregas. Left. Added by all. Eduardo. Fabregas. That was a use of the arm there, but he still goes on to win it back. Sanya and Chorluka. so hard to get back into the game it would be a devastating blow for City to uh, concede one from this half time rapidly approaching Eduardo with the corner uh, it's a system where they've got their individual man to mark City I don't know who they're responsible for Eduardo is the one that nobody wanted it had to be cleared off the line anyway glad they had a man on the post as part of that defensive organisation Elano it was big believer in protecting the force and don't know whether this is going in Adebayor goes up gets a little touch and it's going wide Clichy now Diaby here's Flamini Ireland won it for Ilano here's Fernandez oh, he's done well thought he'd done well unlucky skips away, sort of like with her. she's always prepared to try a pass and open something up. Fernandez, very, very unlucky, couldn't collect that, Petrov. Oh, 
Yes, Stephen Island. Fernandez. In by Petrov. Elano. Oh, Didi Haman is asking. I don't get many, but I'm still capable from this sort of range. Maybe he should have just been laying this square. It's a wonderful take out there. Super little run from Petrov, and he, he takes us out there instantly. Watch a man appear. Edge of the D. Just roll me, he's saying. Roll me. Maybe he should have done. Milano frustrating his German colleague. It is actually uh, four years since Didi Herman scored in the Premier League, remarkably. <laughs> well, he's doing it. Overdue. Here's Ireland. Petrov. Here's her man. Fernandez. Choluca. Milano's cross that deflected in towards Stephen Ireland. And it's back to Petrov who had the shot. Uh, looking at looking for handball of Stephen Ireland. Not so, takes a little deflection this cross here. And it just skips up there. There's not a lot he could have done about it. And there wasn't a lot for Petrov to aim at. He was being closed down. Yeah, probably was top of the arm. But he was being closed down. See Fabregas coming in. Not giving him anything really to shoot at. But just one or two signs. As this uh, half ends that sit here. Feel more comfortable. Getting more of the ball. Starting to ask a question or two of their own. So it's probably coming in actual fact. Half time's probably coming at a wrong time for City. Here's Michael Ball. Way off Sanya. That's Galas. Fabregas just tucking it round to Diaby. Luca Senderos here's her man Stephen Ireland you see what I mean suddenly the crowd find their voices as well but it's all a little bit too late whistle's going to go any second at a time when City are at the best so Arsenal are on course to go top thanks to a magnificent strike from Eduardo but they've been given plenty to think about two minutes eight seconds later Fernandez scored and Manchester City promising recovery. City 1, Arsenal 2. We are in Manchester with the Gunners at the home of Manchester City, where Emmanuel Adebayor continues to score goals and wreak havoc. David Platt is with us, a man who did exactly that in a Gunners jersey. He's just added a different dimension, David, for them, hasn't he? I, I mean... They can play in, in, a, in a manner of ways now. Like I said, you know, at the start of the programme, we were talking about how Arsenal were criticised for trying to walk the ball into the net, and they can still do that. The first goal is basically their good play and their intricate play, you know, um, short passes on the edge of the box, getting people into decent positions. And the second goal, I mean, it, you know, he's just owned there. I mean, he's six foot four, don't get me wrong, but it's, just, it's his ability as well to be able to jump and just hang there, and then he directs the, the, the ball onto Eduardo. When he first came into the team, did we expect him? to produce what he currently is and yeah, be as good as this. I don't think we did because there was a you know the shadow of Thierry Henry as well over him and everybody played towards him. I think he's actually prospered himself again by Thierry Henry not being there. And that sounds strange, but he can lead the line up there almost on his own. And I think he's come to the fore more because he's had to do that. He's had to be the firm, you know, at the forefront of everybody's attention when they get the ball. Um, he's a handful. I mean we talk about the, the, the top two at the moment, Ronaldo for Manchester United, Adiboy for Arsenal. You know, God forbid for those football clubs if ever one of them gets injured. Mm. Well, we're back and we're ready to go with City trailing by two goals to one. Commentators Andy Gray and Rob Hawthorne. Well, Arsenal have won on four of their last five visits here, a sequence broken last year when Joey Barton, whom they faced on his Newcastle comeback last Tuesday, scored the only goal from the penalty spot. But City have been given a chance in this match by Garth Leach's mistake in the first half. Fernandez, the eventual beneficiary of that, but can City complete the comeback in this second half? Well, I also think half-time came at the right time for Arsenal. It's given them a chance to gather themselves and get back on the front foot again. 
Well, even a draw for Manchester City would give them a points total at this stage of the season that they managed in the whole of the last campaign. But taking nothing for granted here against an Arsenal team who could be about to inflict on City their first league defeat here since last May when Manchester United won. Eduardo looking to put them under early pressure as won a corner off Choluca. Well, keep an eye on that start of the second half there. I just wonder, half-time has given Arsenal a chance to change things. We talked about City moving Ireland infield and Alano to the right. Well, I just looked at the start of the second half and Eduardo had started wide on the left and they just tucked Diaby in one, so keep an eye on that. Fabregas with the corner, met by Sturridge ahead of Abu Diaby. And that's Flair just trying to hold off Stephen Ireland. Here's Flamini. Now Clichy. Senderos. I see it, Rado. I think they've started that way. I think that's a compliment to City, the way they finished the half, Rob. Also changed the way they're playing. They were obviously concerned about Ireland, made a couple of little runs at the end of the first half and caused them a few problems. So they just tucked the Abbey in one, moved Eduardo to the left. Yes, Cleb. Had a little bit to do at half time, man, a few words, I guess, normally, but just shifted it, just changed it a little. Here's Flamini, now Pleb. Galas. Now Senderos. Turned away by Alano. Carl Clichy, he'll be hoping to win his first French cap this week. He'll be lining up against Cesc Fabregas when France plays Spain. Flamini, who's also in that French squad, as is Bakary Sanya. Left by Kleb. And Richard Dunn brings it clear. He'd run out of room, Fabregas in the end nicks it away from him. <laughs> Normally what happens to a centre-back or something like that, he just fills someone so he can get time to get back. But he's got himself back in now. That's what they've done better after sort of 25 minutes, things like that. Too many passes that were finding their target now aren't. And they've, they've broken it up better, Manchester City. Here's Eduardo. Now Adebayor. What's Senderos doing up there? I was just going to ask you the same question. Here's Adebayor. Now Petrov. An ambitious ball out to Alano and Clichy intervened. thing about watching Arsenal even when they're winning away from home is they're not very good at closing the game out and, and sitting back and protecting what they have so you can pretty much guarantee the second half is going to be open and City are prepared to come and take the game to them he's done now Paul Risky ball to Haman with Diaby closing in, but away with it, City. Here's Richards taking on Eduardo and finding Choluca. Haman through the middle looking for Sturridge. Away though by Philip Senderos. Here's Kled. Added by all. Sissania. Now Kleb. Cleared by Dunn.
Gallas. Flamini. Here's Adebayo. Away by Ireland, here's Sturridge. Petrov from Ireland and Alano have broken forward here. Sturridge, Petrov out to his left. Sturridge taking on Bakary Sanya. Kalishi away, but only to Petrov. Ball. Alano to challenge with Kalishi. Here's Chaluka. Struck against uh, Kalishi. A man. And away by Diaby. Adebayor has uh, two breaking to his right, Diaby and Alex Hleb. Now Fabregas has joined them. Fabregas deciding to have a go. It's come here to Hleb. Fernandez made a plenty of ground. Yeah, he's done well. Fernandez likes to get forward, but just showing there he's not uh, afraid to get back in there when needed. As we saw from the last couple of minutes, pretty open to get into the second half. That's good. Sixth corner of the game. Senderos under the direction of William Gallas. Coming over to this side. I wonder if there's a language problem. Gallas couldn't tell him. And he was, I don't know. <laughs> Sendros is multilingual. Eduardo's corner is uh, cleared by Richard Dunn. Well, that's a right decision. I thought he played it off to a looker. Senderos there. And the lines uh, sorry, the referee was right in line with that perfect angle to see the deflection off him. That's why there's no complaint from Chaluka, really. Yes, right well. now, there is plenty in this game for City. Make no mistake about it. Petrov. But this is the classic game when you get in your second half where you can see the next goal really will define the game. 2-2 two, two or 3-1, that's a massive difference. Ireland. So much on that one for Fernandez. Here's Choluca. Sturridge. Flamini. Gallas. She advancing. Now Diaby. Clegg. On the ball, letting Arsenal down. I think actually Clegg was playing it so Fabricas could go on and shoot, but I don't think Fabricas realised there was a gap there. He was looking for the little one too, I think. Here's Diaby. Fabregas. Well, I thought for 20 minutes in the first half they were excellent. Arsenal got two up. I do think since then, not quite been there. Another young. He's learned a bit about his game. I mean, he must have thought this is easy. Came on against Sheffield United. Championship side scored, played in midweek against Derby, bought for the Premier League, scored. They must be thinking, well, nah, this is not as bad, this professional football lap, but came up against the top side today. 
It's worked hard, hardly the kick, but it's part of your education. Well, Darius Vassell has been around for a lot longer than Danny Sturridge, and he's never scored against Arsenal. And 14 previous attempts. Fabregas is over the free kick. Senderos and Galas in the mix. Chorluka met it. And Eduardo just keeping Ireland out of the way to earn Arsenal their corner. Retrieved eventually for Cesc Fabregas. Cleared by Vedran Choluka. It's Cleb. Clichy. Lamini looking for Adebayo. Great control. Nearly. Sit a ball from Flamini. And away by Petrov. Here's Kled. Fabregas. Kled. Germany and Chleb linking up well, it's Adebayo, Fabregas! I wonder if Ireland just does enough. Getting in front of Fabregas. Getting lovely little one-two. Well, they had the chance, to be fair. A little Spaniard will know, even though it was on the way up a little. Still a good chance for you, when you've got such good feet as he has. Here's Flamini. Sanya. And a decent start to the second half, this from Arsenal. The uh, threat is growing here. Sanya. Now DRB. Ireland did enough to put him off. Here's a corner. Managed to soak up attack City, they've broken with purpose, but certainly Arsenal looking the more threatening at the moment. Yeah. Can't remember Lehman having to do too much yet in the second half, if anything. Petrov covers the back post. Milano the near post from the corner. And Dunn meets the kick. So we stopped for a second. Diaby was up there, seemed to rise above everyone. Whether he just mistimed it. Sendros. Galas. Here's Sanya. Michael Ball. Petrov just leaves it behind for Alexander Kleb. The level of frustration for the City fans is just starting to grow again. Yeah, the little flicks and tricks are good when they come off and you're on top of your game and you're winning. But when you're chasing the game and, you know, Petrov tries a little flick inside there to nobody, gives possession away, and that's fans then are very quickly on your back. Petrov who 
lifted the fans with the run in the first half. Pretty good attendance again, over 46,000 here at Eastlands. Is Chleb. Now Elano. A man. Sendros is there. This is DRB. Now Fabregas. Eduardo. Gallas. Arsenal just looking really comfortable at the moment. Yeah, as comfortably as you can be at, you know, we're one goal leading away from home. But there's, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind, Arsene Wenger wants another goal. All it takes is a mistake, the likes of which Cliche made, and a pretty good away performance that looks like getting you three points, picks up only one. And that's the worry for Arsenal. That's offside. So is the player flagged offside, but again, the player who was moving on to it was Petrov, who was He's going to get flagged out, Petrov, you watch this. He's so frustrated, he bashed the ball away. That's close, but he looked to me, a flag went up for... They see the thing that kills the, the linesman is if Darius Vassell turns out and away from the play, right? Then the flag would probably stay down. The fact that he turns in towards the ball suggests to the linesman, who's the best part of 70 yards away, that he's looking to get on the ball. Now, if he'd have just stopped running or turned away from the play and allowed Petrov to go, then I hope the flag would have stayed down. But you don't know. Well, I said to you, Fabregas was lucky first half, and he booted the ball away. Petrov didn't hit it anywhere near as far away. Had probably every right to be more frustrated than Fabregas, yet yeah, gets booked. So Deep Mahaman was uh, voicing his feelings about such double standards to the referee. And all these clubs outside the top four will, will tell you that they feel that the big boys get looked after better at times. You take to think that was the case, but... We've got a couple of examples today that maybe suggest that's the case. There's a man. Well, if nothing else, it certainly fired the crowd up. A man coming into the challenge. The referee had already blown, though, for an earlier one. Here's Ball. Is done. Now Haman. Broken up by Eduardo. DRB, here's Fabregas looking for Adebayo. And he's broken through, and Dunn and Richards both converged on him. And Adebayo thinks he might have uh, had a just claim for a penalty. Well, it's when he plays this ball through, and it's after this touch. It's who, who touches the ball, if anybody? Absolutely no one. You see what I mean? Now, Richards does great as a defender. He comes across and edges him out of the way and gets his body in front and says, you ain't getting a clear shot. So that was brilliant defending from Richards. And I think the right decision from the referee in the end. Here's Ball. Done. Now Haman. But there's a danger here for Arsenal in the game that they've not cruised but been very comfortable in for the majority. But they might just need another goal, though. Here's Ball. Raymond just uh, unsure of his bearings at the edge of the area. Has to kick clear. Here's Choluka. A man. Ireland looking for the flick on. Senderos leaves it. Yeah. 
done. Now ball. Done. Milano losing out to Gallas. Broken up by Ireland, but Gallas cleans up again for Arsenal. Clichy. Diaby. Haman. Gallas got a touch, but Purcell thought that had his name written on it. Lehman got there, though. Milano! Keep your eyes on this for 25 minutes. There's a bit of work for Arsenal to do here. Again, it's another piece of play. It's broken up early by Haman. And a lovely ball over the top. I have to say, the keeper did pretty well there. Always a difficult one for Alano to get enough pace on it to get it over and beyond the retreating goalkeeper. So he's just getting back to his feet and uh, we can remind you of the action we've got coming up on Sunday. Can Newcastle get their first win, their first goal since Kevin Keegan took charge again they're live against Middlesbrough on Sky Sports 1 and HD 1 from 1 o'clock and that's followed by Fulham's latest match in their struggles against relegation they take on Aston Villa from 3.30 Sky Sports 1 and HD 1 well the last thing Arsenal need is to give Manchester United any encouragement ahead of their visit to White Hart Lane today but there is a danger with the narrowness of the lead they hold here at Eastlands of giving City encouragement to get back into this game United City's next opponents Bakary Sanya Richard Dunn here's Diaby Clichy looking for Adebayor and the flag stays down for Emmanuel Adebayor. Here's Chleb. Flamini. Now Haman. Space here for Petrov. Ilano. Looking for Ireland. Clichy. Got it away. Mm. Rather tentative on his weaker side there. Clichy. Most encouraging spell of the second half so far for City. Here's Ilano. Aimed towards Chorluca and he finds him. Clichy with the header clear though. Looking for Adebayor who's up against Micah Richards. Richards standing his ground. Haman. Chorluca. Second half possession still in favour of Arsenal, that's not a surprise, but we're just getting to a stage in the game where City start to take a chance. It's a bit more belief about them in the last few minutes. Yeah. Senderos. Three games now since uh, City won at Newcastle. They've got another couple of tough ones coming up after this. Following United away, it's Everton here. Here's Petrov. Now Ball. Clegg. Adebayor. Clegg pulling it back for Flamini. Not quite like he hit in midweek, was it? <laughs> Not quite as clean as that one. No. And again, this is more, more like the old Arsenal. We'd always look for that ball back to the edge of the 18-yard box from wide areas. They have the alternative now, of course, just to stand it there. Oh, the corner that Gallas hoped to work last time didn't come off for Eduardo. 
This one has been pulled back to Matteo Flamini. And he's quickly closed down by Richards. Away by Chorluca. Here's Ilano. Galas bidding to get back, but they've looked straight away for Ireland. Senderos had to cut it out. Ireland still sees a chance here. Lehman, though, saving the corner. A new sense of urgency about City, and that really is a waste from Petrov. He generally has been one of their better players this season. Is it one of those days today? Everyone has a bad day oh, at the yes. office, I suppose. Just the little balls like that, little one-touch balls he's played. He's just played them in areas where he's never got one back, I don't think, yet. And he's lucky Didi Havan talked about him living on the edge if he wants to play next week. And, you know, when you're as late as that and as reckless as that, I think the referee's been kind to him there. And with uh, a tenth booking, they would rule him not out of just the Manchester United match, but the Everton one as well. Here's Eduardo. DRB. Flamini. Fabregas. There's been a little bit of a chorus of Geo going around the ground, and uh, Sven Jor Eriksson is about to respond by sending on Giovanni, the man who scored the winner against Manchester United here. That was uh, back in August at a stage of the season when Manchester City had won all of their games and hadn't conceded a goal. The first one they let in was in the next match against Arsenal to Cesc Fabregas. Here's done. Flamini. Clichy. Just a little flat spell in the match. In the last five minutes. Here's done. And Joran Eriksson will be hoping that Giovanni can have the impact he had on his debut when he came on and scored against West Ham at the start of the season. It's Clichy. Done. Clichy. Here's Flamini. Galas. Back up against that of all, which gives Manchester City the break they needed to make their substitution. Didi Haman is the man coming off. Yeah, I think that makes sense, doesn't it? Trying to get a goal. Really, Didi's not going to do that. And he's also one, one, I think, one foul away from a booking. So Sven Joran Eriksson keeps him for next week, and uh, Giovanni has gone straight into the attack. Here's Fernandez. Yeah, and Alan's just dropped back, at, dropped in one. And, Giovanni's just pushed up top, right-hand side. And he's got to be careful they don't empty it. And Elano and Fernandez don't go at the same time. And leave them exposed a little. Ireland with the header back. You know, I just think this is a big weekend for the top three. All the way from home, all tough. 
you know, Man City, Portsmouth and Tottenham were not easy places for anybody to go and win a game. And I think Arsenal would know that, that they're first up and the importance for them to get three points and then City, Manchester United and Chelsea. Go on then, lads. See what you can do. Well, they're on course to do it at the moment, but with the final quarter of an hour now looming here, nothing can be taken for granted. No, you better believe it. That might be the first corner, the bad, I don't know, but I can't remember too many Arsenal have faced. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but as it's when you've got Chaluka, when you have Dunn, when you have Richards, you know, you've got three real powerful headers there. And they've matched them up, Gallas, Senderos, Diaby. Dunn going for this, lost his footing. Well, Dunn's made a mistake, Fabregas, Adebayor has a man over to his left in Eduardo. Ball, the last man back, Fernandez getting back. Fabregas is free if he can find him. And it's deflected back off Michael Ball, and City were lucky. Richard Dunn very lucky. Richard Dunn extremely lucky. And they've got Elano off the field at the moment, City, while they're breaking forward here with Petrov. He's come back on now. Cleared by Bakary Sanya. Brought it a long way, Sanya. Well, this is the one before. Don't think it was meant for Richard Dunn. Fernandez was the target, and he just nicked it off his own toes. But Michael Ball does well, you know. Look how he delays going out, delays going out. And he just makes it difficult for Eduardo to find Fabregas. He didn't make the path through to him an easy one. <laughs> and by the way, seconds ago, I don't think that ball was out, you know, on the touchline. The ball boy ran on, picked the ball up, <laughs> chucked it to the goalkeeper. <laughs> it didn't look like the ball went out. Senderos under pressure from Vassell. Here's Sanya, ball at his back. Fabregas. Here we go. Now, I know he wants his team to win, but this is ridiculous. Look, the cross goes in, look, ball stays in, bounces on the line. Oh, go, on. go on then, hurry up, keep on. <laughs> <laughs> Made the lines was mind up for him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good lad. Stuart bonus, that boy. <laughs> Flamini. Here's Diaby. Well, there's Eduardo's goal, which is worthy of winning the match. Going to win the match. Well, if it does, you can you can bet that Ericsson won't be happy. But the flag never went up. So once again, she lines in not in a very good position. And he wasn't then. Difficult to give that decision against Eduardo, but we all know he was fractionally offside. And that's what Ericsson will concentrate on. Here's Giovanni. All given away cheaply to Adebayor. Now Fabregas. Here's Eduardo. Diaby. Fabregas. Now Kleb. Fabregas. Adibayor just couldn't get the touch. So having survived at one end, can City make the most of their good fortune at the other? Petrov's lucky there, that was another sloppy pass from him, but fortunately for him, Fabregas just got a touch on it. I don't know where they're shouting it. He just gets eased out there. A little, a little ease in the back from Mika Richards, but 
nothing much. Well, then giving away the uh, free kick for the challenge on Matteo Flamini. He'll be relieved to get through this one, Arsene Wenger. But uh, still an anxious ten minutes ahead for the Arsenal manager. Giovanni. Sanya. Senderos. What about all pulling wide with Eduardo? The option is trying to roll it back into his path. It's cleared to Fabregas. Oh, great strike from Fabregas. Yeah, always just bending away from goal. It was there to be him. You can tell as soon as this ball's got some air on it and it's coming bouncing towards him and he controls it like that, he's always going to hit it. Never on target, really. He'll be a little disappointed, young man. He scored in the last two wins against Manchester City for Arsenal as Cesc Fabregas. And what a tip the 11th Arsenal have managed. More than double those managed by City, although it's closer in terms of those on target. Mm. It's a lovely ball from Fabregas, picking out Clichy. Here's Diaby. Eduardo. Flamini struck against Michael Ball. Here's Giovanni. Lano's uh, just come back on. He had a blow to the face. Petrov. Here's DRB. Another change from Manchester City. A bold move from Sven Joran Eriksson. Emil and Penza coming on for Stephen Island. Decent shift from Ireland, I thought today Stephen Ireland has worked really hard. Yeah, a good shift in, but they need a goal and, and Penzas. The front man got beside Vassell. So another reshuffle and Emil and Penza, whose only Champions League goal was against Arsenal back in his Schalke days, there to give Darius Vassell some support. Away to Abu Diaby, and he can hit them. Rolls this one in for Adebayor, though, and Dunn gets it away. Nudge in the back of Giovanni by Matteo Flamini. Here's Fernandez. Milano. Here's Dunn. Away by Galas. Fabregas. Here's Adebayor. Fabregas has stayed in the middle. Sanya. Diaby. Clerk. Fabregas has moved on to it. Taken away from him in the end by Richard Dunn. Yeah, more confidence on his left side, and he might have just gone on and hit that. Five minutes to go. Can Arsenal hold on? Or do City have it within them? 
to complete this recovery from 2-0 down. Great ball from Petrov, this is Michael Ball. Here's Ilano. Richard Dunn. I've really gone, rather gone back to where they started with Petrov's crossfield ball. Three or four passes later, they've ended up back there. Petrov the one they were looking for again there. Klishi though, gets in the way. Here's Eduardo. Struck against Dunn. It's Fernandez. Here's Choluca. Milano. Strike the hand of uh, Matteo Flamini. Sight of Richards coming forward, Dunner stayed back, but he's being urged forward now by Derek Fazakali. Oh, he's over hit that, Milano. That's what they didn't want. That ball just goes straight out of play like that. Just have to be careful, City, that the season doesn't drift away for them now. Such a positive start. 12 games here unbeaten up till today. High up in the league, never out of the top six really for most of the season. So they just have to be careful in the next three or four weeks that the, the season doesn't drift away for them, Rob. Well, they got into the UEFA Cup through the uh, Fair Play Award four years ago, but it's three decades since they got into Europe via their league position. But from the start they've made, they would certainly have hopes of doing that this year. But there'll still be something for them from this match. Hearts kick aimed towards Richard Dunn, who makes it his. Cleared by Senderos, then by Diaby. Here's Petrov. Ilano. Choluca. Galas away. Back by Fernandez. all comes to meet it and finds Hlep. And the referee plays a very good advantage this time. It's Hleb. Left behind for Fabregas, Hleb, Adibayo, that settles it. His second of the game, and Arsenal are heading to the top of the Premier League. That was always a possibility, a third goal, with City chasing the equaliser. Looked like they might have overdone it again, but no. And it is no surprise, he closes the gap yet again on Cristiano Ronaldo. There's a foul. Referee says play on and why not? They've got a 4v3 situation. And I just thought for a minute they've just overdone it. But it just squeezes out to anybody on. And well, I don't think there was ever a doubt of the outcome of this finish when this ball sits as nicely as that for the top goal scorer. Just watch this, focuses on it, takes his time and just slides it in the corner. Keep us no chance, game's over. Arsenal done the job, Batten's now handed to the other two. Another good goal-scoring return for Emmanuel Adebayor. The change that Arsenal were intending to make anyway. They've taken off Alexander Hleb. And Justin Hoyt comes on for a matter of minutes here. The man who conceded the penalty here last season with which Manchester City beat Arsenal, but Arsenal set for another victory over City here now. So does that mean he misses next week, Milano? It does, he yes. Boots for that little cynical trap there. Yep, there's always the risk for Manchester City coming into the game with so many on the booking. No, this is it. As he goes, you watch this, there's a deliberate kick. Hacks him down, but I'll tell you what, you talk about desire, who did he hack down? Adibayor. Who got up and finished it off? Adibayor. Two added minutes. 
Solano looking for Giovanni. Clichy. Diaby. So it's at 19-18 now, goal scoring charts. That's right. I think it is, isn't it? 19 for Ronaldo, 18 for Adebayo, the rest a distance away. It's 21 now in all competitions for uh, Emmanuel Adebayo. It's a phenomenal run he's on at the moment. Here's Diaby, Flamini, Clichy, here's Senderos, Diaby, here's Choluca. Senderos. Fabregas. Clichy will be feeling a lot better about life now. His uh, mistake doesn't prove costly in the end. Fabregas. Clichy. And on a day of away days for the top three, Arsenal throw down the gauntlet to the other two. With a victory here, thanks to two goals from their goal machine, Emmanuel Adebayor, bringing Manchester City's first league defeat of the season here, their first league defeat here under Sven Joran Eriksson. Two from Adebayor, one from Eduardo, Manchester City one, Arsenal three. Well, it's terrific, wasn't it? Emmanuel Adebayor, that's eight in his last six league games now. But it wasn't just that, it was his work rate as well. Absolutely top class. But I think he's had enough. <laughs> That's Arsenal back on top. Well played. Manchester City won, Arsenal three. And of course, they become the first team to win here in the league this season. There's confirmation Arsenal top, replacing Manchester United. But for how long? No change for Manchester City. Fixtures elsewhere today confirming that Chelsea travel to Portsmouth, Manchester United travel to Tottenham. Um, third fixture down is interesting as well. That's a must win, Rafa says, for Liverpool against Sunderland, who haven't won since New Year's Day. Football first tonight, 8.25, Sky Sports 1. The live football looks like this from the Championship. It's Watford against Wolves at quarter past five. Sky Sports 1, it's available in high definition on channel 408. Tomorrow, in the Scottish Cup, we've got the fifth round tie between Hibs and Rangers. Midday, Sky Sports 2. Celtic, incidentally, have won today. They've beaten Kilmarnock 5-1. Sam Allardyce will be our guest as Newcastle play Middlesbrough from one on Sky Sports 1. It's followed with Fulham and Villa from half past three. Again, on Sky Sports 1. Again, those matches tomorrow available in high definition. The Scottish match on Channel 409. David Platt is with us. Thoroughly enjoyed that performance of Emmanuel Adebayor, uh, who he has named as man of the match. Um, we'll see if we can get a word with him between now and when we go, but um, they're still enjoying themselves. More to come after the break. Southern Hemisphere to take on the Kiwis. Beautiful strike. 
Follow their tour of New Zealand exclusively live with Sky Sports. Great move. Three test matches. How good is this? Five one-day internationals. There's a beauty. And he's gone. But first up, two international 2020s. In the air, take it. New Zealand v England international 2020s. Starting Tuesday, 6 a.m. Sky Sports 1. Go out there in the freezing wastes. You must be mad. It's my birthday. It is his birthday. It is his birthday. Well, why didn't you say so? Of course we're going out. Is it smart? Smart casual, probably. Yeah, oh, come on then, guys. Let's go. Let's <laughs> burn it up. Have you ever stopped and wondered? What makes something beautiful? Or powerful? Or memorable? To doubt is human, but sometimes it's good to be certain. With Hiscox, nearly half the claims we pay would not be covered by a standard insurance policy. Hiscox, extraordinary cover. I filled out the British Gas Energy Savers Report online. It was really easy to do and showed me how I could save up to £364, which is great. The ways to save are simple and it'll make my home more energy efficient. Find out how you could cut up to a third off your energy bill. Get your free personalised energy savers report at britishgas.co.uk. There's more to life than making films. Fighting for the causes I believe in. Finding time for myself. But you've still got to keep up. It's the same for my skin. Vitalift Double Lifting Moisturizer from L'Oreal Men Expert. In one step, wrinkles appear reduced. Skin feels tautened. Vitalift from L'Oreal Men Expert. The future of your skin is in your hands. You're worth it. Enterprise rental car for my trip. That's too expensive, sir. It's not expensive, Mum. Enterprise picks us up. Sounds expensive. Pickup's free, Mum. If Enterprise isn't expensive, you could have hired me an even posher car. Turn the radio on, Mum. Unwrap the perfect rental package. Great cars, low rates, and we'll pick you up. Enterprise. For 50 years, we've been building your ideas into our homes, and now there's never been a better time to buy a Barrett home. For a wide range of great offers, including our stress-free part exchange program, visit barretthomes.co.uk or call us on 0845 60 80 100. Barrett Homes, great offers built around you. Our lowest ever pay monthly rate. With unlimited texts. No long contract. Just 30 days notice. Keep your handset. Keep your number. Keep it simple. Simplicity. Only from O2. Well, as they say at the Emirates, Adebayor giving the ball and he will score. Well, he has done a couple of times today. Here he is, man of the match with Jeff Shreves. Emmanuel being the first team to win here this season, does that make victory even sweeter? Of course, of course. We know that before coming here, the game is going to be tough, it's going to be difficult, and you can see it was even more than difficult, but at the end, we managed to take our three points away. We won it, we were very happy and pleased about our performance. 
I think um, Manchester City they have a good team, strong team, and for sure they will finish in the top of this uh, of the table at the end of the season because they play quite well and they have a lot of talented players. Was it a strange game because you went into a two 0 lead, let them back into it, then you seem to be a bit nervous? Yeah, of course, of course. As soon as they score, they are uh, when we score our second goal, we, we, we think the game was finished. And when they scored uh, their first two one, it was a little bit difficult. But I think we, respond, we responded very well. We have to do it in, in all the game have to be playing ahead, and I think we have done that very well. And we are very pleased about our performance today. For the all-important third goal, would you praise the referee for playing advantage? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I think it was, the referee tried to play the advantage here, but it was very difficult. It could, I have a penalty, he doesn't say, but that's part of football. And the most important thing is we have won and we are very happy with that. That's 18 goals for you now this season. Do you feel like you can score every time you go on the pitch? I don't know, I don't know. The most important thing is keep on doing a good job. The most important thing is defend hard with the team. At the moment, I'm just enjoying myself like a, like a little child in this squad because everyone loves me, the fans love me, the players like me. So the most important thing is keep on doing the job and keep on scoring some goals. As soon as I have a chance, I'm trying to put it in. And the moment, it's, it's going in, so I'm very pleased with that. OK, well done. You're the Barclays man of the match today. Well done. Thank you. I think this man of the match, I will... I will share with the team because I think we've done a good job. Everyone's defending hard, very hard for the team and we deserve to win. We want it to be very happy. Thank you. You're welcome. Very classy. That. It's a little like they used to when they wrote on their shirts ahead of scoring, wasn't it? These man of the match speeches are all pre-planned, I think, now <laughs> by the gutters. By the way, one thing he's not, he's a little child, isn't it? <laughs> no, he's a six foot four one, isn't he? But I, I thought his, his performance today was absolutely exceptional. And I think takeaway is two goals take away the, the, the goal he made for Eduardo. I think he has absolutely been unbelievable for Arsenal today. He's led the line so, so well. Every time Arsenal have got the ball, they've been able to pick him out. I mean, these are, these are the end conclusions of, of, of what we've seen, where he's having an effect on the game by scoring goals. But for me, it was just, you know, he's playing against Richard Dunn and Micah Richards that are two very, very strong central defenders. And he works the full, the width, full width of the pitch. The whole he? thing. I mean, he's basically, he can lead the line on his own scores goals it's hard to find a weakness in him absolutely unbelievable performance i think it was by him today and, and he can turn around and he can say you know i'm going to share it with the team and that's you know it, it, it's nice of him to say that but without any shadow of a doubt i think without him in the side today arsenal could well have struggled today eight in six it is for adebayor he is now one behind cristiano ronaldo who's got the 19 it's some way back then to Benjani of Portsmouth, or is it Manchester City? We await a decision on Monday, Sven Euron Eriksson said earlier. Uh, here's the manager of the league leaders, Arsene Wenger, with Jeff Shreves. Arsene, 3-1 is a comfortable scoreline, but does that tell the whole story? Well, I believe that we controlled always the game, but the 2-1, you never know. Uh, they didn't come out, we played in a very disciplined way, and as long as it was for us not to make a mistake, uh, we played in, our, in their half, but uh, as long as you don't score the third goal, you never know. How difficult is it to find the balance at 2-1, whether to hold what you've got or push on? Well, I, I feel we are not a team who is comfortable when we uh, just defend, you know, and uh, therefore I pushed my team to continue to try to score a third goal, but... Uh, you could see we were a little bit in between two, you know, being cautious and uh, without having the audacious desire to absolutely score the third goal. And it came more because uh, City opened up uh, in the last 10, 15 minutes because they brought uh, striker after striker on and then the third goal came. With City threatening at half time, what was the slight tactical uh, move that you made? I uh, changed because. Uh, they changed, they put Dylan on the right flank and Ireland made runs in behind our defenders when I put uh, Diaby in the middle to control better our, uh, our centre and uh, put Eduardo on the left and uh, get Fabregas to push on uh, behind Adebayo. It's the most important thing today, quite simply, to win, no matter how, and go back to the top of the table. Exactly, we want... Uh, it, it is a good guarantee because they never lost at home. It's the first defeat. And uh, it's always difficult when you, when a team has that belief that they do not uh, lose, you know, uh, to get there and to win. And now do you feel you've done your job and say, go on then, Manchester United and Chelsea, match that? Exactly. We want to enjoy our victory first and, of course, uh, see what the others do. But uh, what is good is that we don't depend on their results. We just, uh, we, don't, we have done our job for the weekend and uh, let's see what, what happens. Thank you, Arsene. Thank you. Having waxed lyrical about Adebayor, have you seen a more natural finisher than Eduardo? 
Um, in, in the league, I mean, it's let's difficult let's to say. I mean, I, I, in the yeah. league at the moment. Uh, no, not in the league at the moment and uh, playing on a regular basis. I think Defoe comes into that category, to be honest with you. He's a natural finisher as well, and I've worked with him. But, it, you know, it's the pictures that strikers have in the mind. And it, it, like I said at half time, this is an improvisation from Eduardo. As soon as this ball goes there, he's, he's got himself in between in a good goal scoring position. Offside, Doesn't worry mind. whether. It, yeah, he's offside. But, uh, take that away. It's, it's this. As it comes down to him, he can feel Richards, knows where he is, and he knows how to score the goal. He knows exactly what he's going to do to Doesn't score the goal. At all, no, does none he? whatsoever. You know, some people might try and have a flick at this. Some people might get it under control and then take the other touch. But he knows, as soon as that ball's dropping to him, he knows exactly what he's going to do. But it's, it's not just this goal. I think I've seen him score goals you know, for Croatia as well and, and, and obviously um, you know, for Arsenal since mm. he's come here. And all of them seem to be very, very natural. The good it, strikers goals. His international goals. manager, Slaven Bilic, was with us here about a fortnight ago mm. and he said he's, you know, he's not just the fox in the box. He said he's a really good footballer. Have Not, you seen that as well? Yes, I have. Yeah, he's an intelligent player um, and a good foil. And the other thing that you've got to say as well, a lot of players that are centre forwards that score goals may well have sulked with the change, that, the tactical change that Arsene Wenger made, and he didn't. He actually fitted into that left-hand side role, worked back and tracked back, and, and did his work like a good professional. And you know that's pleasing to see as well, um, because a lot of strikers, like I said, would sulk when they mm. get put out there. Just the, 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 the one blot, I suppose, was the goal they gave away, and it made it uncomfortable at different periods mm. in the match. They were strong enough to resist City, but sometimes you are the architect of your own problems, aren't you? And so, certainly Arsenal were here. Yeah, you are, but I think, you know, such is the confidence that Arsenal are playing with and Manchester United that this is what they do now. They don't, you know, a, a lot of coaches would look at that and say, just defend it. You're a defender, just clear it. And, you know, when this happens, you have to say that that's the right thing to do. Um, but sometimes, you know, you... you if you're playing with that kind of confidence. Their second came from Gallas. Exactly, from playing. So playing are they always out. thinking, well, if we can spring so. here, we've think, got a chance? I think what they're doing is saying, right, we're going to keep the football and they're confident in every area of the pitch to be able to pass the way out of um, situations. Unfortunately, what happens if you do concede that, like you say, you know, for a long period of the time, they weren't really uncomfortable, but at 2-1, there was always a chance that Manchester City could spring something. Uh, Sven Juren Eriksson is uh, waiting for us. Here he is. Sven, your first defeat at home, were Arsenal that good or were you not quite good enough? Yeah, Arsenal is good, no doubts about that. And, uh, but we start in the games too soft. We, uh, we start to play and we start to fight with them uh, after they have scored two goals and then it's uh, very late. So I think we did OK in uh, the second part of the first half and we competed with them second half as well. But too soft and it's not the first time, so we have to think about it, we have to work on it and so on, because it's important. We have to, we have to fight at, uh, until the end of this season, because we, we want to play in Europe next, uh, next year, and uh, for many reasons. For, uh, but um, we have to do better than this. But of course, Arsenal is a very good team, and when they go 2-0 two, two up, it's very difficult, because they can take it easy and they can wait for an uh, occasion and make counter-attacks and they're always very dangerous in that. Thank you, Sven. Thank you. They could have done with bursting a few balloons last week. Has cities this season? Do you see a club here in freefall? Not in freefall, um, but I certainly think that this, and Andy said it in commentary, this next two or three weeks is very, very important with them because they've put themselves into a decent position. Um, and as, as he says, and I think that's the first time he's admitted it, that we want to get into Europe. Before it was all, well, we'll see, we're doing well at this moment in time, but you know, a top 10 finish, whatever they wanted to get. But there he's admitted that he wants to get into Europe. And I think this next two or three weeks, in the form that they're in and the games that they've got coming up, if they are to falter, it could be very difficult to get into that area. Thanks for your company. Appreciate it, David. Live football the rest of the day looks like this. It's Watford against Wolves at quarter past five on Sky Sports 1. It's available in high definition on channel 408. Later tonight, Almeria meet Real Madrid at 7 on Sky Sports Extra. It's followed by Betis and Deportivo at 9 on Sky Sports Extra. Super League's back. It's Leeds against Hull KR from half past five. Eddie, Stevo and the boys. Uh, it's the sixth in the series of the A1 Grand Prix from Sydney. Race day at 3 a.m. on Sky Sports 1. And the cricket. It's Australia against India from Brisbane, first of the one-day internationals at 3 a.m. on Sky Sports 2. India probably looking for revenge for that hammering in the 2020 on Friday. That's it, Arsenal back on top. It's over to Manchester United and Chelsea, who play later in the day. A soccer special on the way with Jeff Stelling and the boys. Stay with us for that. <laughs>